What's up guys? We're out riding on the Rad Rover. It's very nice out, probably almost 70 degrees. But I wanted to make a quick video for you today to keep you updated on the whole Bolton controller upgrade I did. I've got 131 miles on the controller. No problems yet, so all is good. And just wanted to do a quick video to tell you, um, you know, if you're considering buying that upgrade, here's five things you might want to know. So first off, let me show you what I'm talking about for those of you who might not know. Bolton eBikes makes a Rad Rover specific controller. This thing, upgrade kit for this bike. And I installed it. And we've been riding around for 131 miles so far over the course of a month or two. I don't remember when I put it on there, but testing it out. See, it's working great. And I just want to let you know some things about it in case you're thinking about buying it. I think they're still available. I know they were back ordered for a while, but. And they fit a variety of rad bikes, so. Okay, the million dollar question. The first thing that everybody probably thinks of and the reason you're probably looking at buying it is that does it make this bike faster? No, it does not. This bike is no faster at all with the controller upgrade. So, sorry to disappoint. You don't gain any top speed at all doing the controller upgrade. What you do get though is awesome acceleration. The, it accelerates a lot faster than the stock Red Rover controller does. So that's good. It's worth it in my eyes just for that. It's, I feel like the bike is accelerates as it should now. It felt kind of like a dog before, but here I'll show you. We're on flat ground, so. It gets up to 20 miles an hour decently fast you know i did a whole video on installing this controller and i did side by side comparisons of hill climbs and you know acceleration tests and if you want you want to see all that side by side stuff stock versus new you know just check out that video i'll put the link in the description but it definitely has much better acceleration that's for sure so no more top speed sorry uh, let's see what else. The second thing I'll say is, okay, let's talk about the install. I complained <laughs> a lot in that video about installing this controller and it didn't come with mounting hardware and I had to figure it out and you're drilling holes and breaking drill bits. And I was really kind of hating on it for that. Um, but there's, I mean, there's easier mounting options out there that I just didn't know about. They sell these things on Amazon, like these controller mounting boxes that'll literally go on this bike in like two seconds. You just throw the controller in there and it comes with all the hardware and it mounts right up. So in hindsight, I would have used one of those probably. You know, I took the time to, I kind of overdid mine too. It's a little bit, maybe overkill. Um, I'll show you real quick. So what I did on mine, you know, I did outdoor Velcro and then I put a, uh, and then I did a self-tapping screw on the top here and on the bottom and also put a zip tie around it because I just didn't trust this flimsy tab here. In my previous video, I, I complained a lot about that and how it should have come with hardware and blah, blah, blah. The guy that makes the controllers actually responded to my video and said, what you should do is just reuse the stock um, hardware from the, you know, the stock controller and just buy longer bolts that'll go through these tabs. But that doesn't really get rid of the problem I saw, which is this is kind of flimsy. Maybe if you put metal behind it and support it, it would be good. But so mine's kind of overkill on there. I just really wanted it secure. But like I said, Mounting box from Amazon, they're like eight bucks or something crazy cheap. That would probably take care of the install. So what I want to tell you about the install that's important to know is that, that they make those boxes. I didn't know that. Um, and anyone can do it. It's not a difficult job at all. Everything you unplug from the bike, you may have to fish some wires out a little bit from inside this tube here. Um, but every plug that comes out of the bike has a matching plug in the controller. It is literally plug and play. You just plug it in. Mounting it was the hardest piece. Um, and you're good to go. So don't worry about having to, you know, do anything crazy with wiring. You, you don't. You just literally plug and unplug stuff. So anybody can install it. I wouldn't worry about that if anybody's worried about it. And it's also super simple to program the screen. Because you got to program it. But again... No need to worry there. It's super easy to do it. That's enough on the install. What's another important thing to know about it? The other thing to know is that when you get the controller, you also get 
a new screen. So of course this isn't my stock screen, this is a new one. I like it much better. It is way more informative, I guess. You got battery voltage, the watts, um, miles per hour. You can toggle through, you know, average speed, max speed. You get the, uh, the trip meter and also the overall odometer. You get actually a temperature gauge and better than my, uh, mine's a 2018 Rover. So my bike did not have a USB port on the screen. So by buying the controller, getting the upgraded screen, I now have a USB port on the back of this I can use to charge whatever I need to, which was a huge plus. Not that I use it that much, but it's handy to have. So I definitely like the screen. That's important to know that you do get this awesome screen as an upgrade with the controller. So um, it's a lot brighter, easier to read, tells you more stuff. Um, it also is easy to program. I mean, so when you turn it off, turn it on. Um, here, I'll do it real quick. So power off. And when you power on, within five seconds, you just hold down. I think it's up and down. And boom, you're into all your settings you can change. So if you're a person that's concerned about this bike being legal and 750 watts, you can program that in here, you know, your top speed so that you don't go over whatever it is, the 20 mile an hour limit by law. But so it's super simple. Um, better interface to program this thing. You can just toggle through with the arrows. So that is way better as well. So good thing to note, the screen is an important piece of that upgrade. All right, what else is important to know? All right, so <laughs> this is important to know because a lot of you guys ask me this in the comments. A lot of people ask me this. What does it do to your range, the battery range? And I know a lot of you are gonna fight me on this. Um, but the proof is in the pudding, my friend. I'm speaking from my own personal experience. The controller does not alter the range. At least for me, it didn't. And I can see the comments blowing up now, but look, I, the range is all in how much you use the throttle and how much you use the power. I'm not cranking this thing to the max constantly, so I don't burn through my battery any faster than I did with the stock controller. It outputs a bunch more watts, yeah. It's 1250 now, I've seen it go up to, I think even higher sometimes, versus the 750, but it really didn't change the, the range I get out of this bike at all. This is what I do with it. I just ride around town at 10 miles an hour. So my range has been really unaffected. It's all in how much you're twisting this baby is what's gonna eat up your battery. When I'm just not pedaling and cranking on the throttle endlessly yeah it burns through the battery nice and quick so take your own riding style into consideration that's what's going to judge your range so there you go i did a whole range test video it got a lot of comments good and bad <laughs> but um, a lot of you were mad that i didn't take it to you know the battery dying but you know i rode the bike for 30 miles and i was trying to really put a hurt on the battery and to drain it down and I, and I only got it down halfway and I was tired for the day. I was, yeah, it's more than I normally ride. I usually only ride like 10 miles, but the range isn't really affected. Um, you can see actually, I mean, I have purposely been not charging the battery. Um, I uh, have done, I think three separate rides on the bike now. You can see my battery's still showing full showing 48 volt um, I've gone 21.3 miles and I've yet to lose a bar of power I'm sure the battery is depleting but it's not showing a massive depletion on the screen here so you know there you go I've run, ridden 21 miles haven't charged the battery still showing full this whole voltmeter I don't really understand it uh, I am not an e-bike builder I don't know a whole lot about it I just ride them okay so I don't even understand the little voltmeter because when the battery's fully charged and I put it on there, it's reading like 53 point something, which I don't really get it because it's a 48 volt battery. So I don't know. Someone, someone can explain that to me, but I don't really care, honestly. Like I said, I just ride the thing. I'm like, uh, what's that? What's his name in that movie? Days of Thunder, Cold Trickle, Tom Cruise. You know, he doesn't know anything about driving a race car. He just knows how to drive. So that's how I am with the e-bike. I know nothing about watts and voltage and amps and amp hours and 
any of that crap. I just ride it and it's fun. So that's enough on battery range. All right, I got one last one for you. And it is a question that a lot of people have asked me in the comments. So I'll answer it here. The information is out there if you just go read it. And that is everybody wants to know if you install this controller, does it void your Rad Rover warranty? Yep, it sure does. At least in my opinion, when I read the warranty, uh, it seems their warranty only covers like manufacturing defects. So if you buy this bike and you ride it twice and the frame cracks because it wasn't welded right, yeah, they'll probably cover that, but they're not gonna cover wearable parts like tires, stuff like that. But it says in there, if you read the terms, that it does not cover abuse, misuse, commercial use, but it also says alterations, modifications, and it also says installation of parts that were not originally intended to be on this bike. So if you ask me, that covers a controller that they don't make. <laughs> they are not gonna cover anything if you alter it with a different controller. I'm not sure how they would know unless you told them, but yeah, if you put this thing on there and you burn out your motor, and then you tell them, yeah, I upgraded the controller, they're gonna say, sorry, pal not covered so yeah it's going to void the warranty for sure um, i did read in there like if you have problems they expect you to send pictures of the problems in before they'll even cover anything um, i can kind of speak to that in that they do want photographic evidence of stuff because i i have dealt with rad's service department on one occasion um, i did pop the rear tire on this bike very bad i had a stick come in and just destroy the back tire and it popped it so bad uh, that I wasn't sure the tire was repairable with a patch. There was a huge hole in it. So I went on to Rad's website and I ordered a new tube and a brand new back tire and had it shipped out. They sent me the wrong tire. They sent me one for a Rad City. And I messaged them back and said, hey, you guys sent me the right tube but the wrong tire. And they said, okay, well take a picture of it and send us the picture and then we'll send you the new fat tire so i had to lean the rad city skinny tire up against my bike and show them hey you sent me the wrong one and then they you know sent me the right one so yeah they do want pictures of stuff so if you do make a warranty claim on rad that wasn't a warranty claim but uh if you do make a claim just know you're probably going to send them pictures of your bike well there you go guys there's just a few things you need to know if you're going to think about doing this Bolton controller upgrade. If you have any questions, shoot them in the comments. I'll try to answer them. Um, also too, you can see that my bike, you can see that my bike has quite a few alterations to it and extra goodies. I actually did a whole video on every accessory on this bike, front to back. So if you wanna know what seat or bag or mirrors or whatever, go check out that video. I list them all out, prices and everything included. So that's all for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed, thanks for watching.